Here we go. It's a show about the apocalypse, and I feel like we're living through one right now. So is there anything you learned from Echo that's helping you cope with the situation? Oh my God, yes. You know, it was crazy because we finished filming right in the middle of as it was coming into Canada. And um, we were filming very remotely, deep in the mountains. I would leave for work at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. I'd be there with no cell phone reception. And then we would leave that little area for like, you know, at nighttime. So I never saw the, um, I never really experienced the city slowing down, you know, like I didn't really get to experience what was happening. We didn't have our, we couldn't see what was going on on our phones. And then the first day after we finally wrapped, I like, looked outside and I was like, this is the apocalypse. This is actually happening. <laughs> um, so I learned from the hundred to buy all the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was moments like towards, at first I was sleeping. I don't know what, what you were doing, but I, I really rested the first couple weeks. And then I kind of busied myself for you know the middle part but towards the end I started getting really depressed like I started being very affected by like what's what's how long is this lasting is the world going to be the same and I actually thought to myself <laughs> echo has been in much worse situations um and she's just fought through so I was like Tasia you have to just fight through whatever happens you can't control it but you have to figure out how to be more, you know, uh, flexible and not let it feel so immense, you know? So that's, I mean, I just borrowed her attitude, basically. I don't know how to build fires or anything, but <laughs> I'll learn that later. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think the crew would deal with everything that's been going on? I feel like Abby would have a cure by now, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Raven would for sure have some sort of like machine that did all of the things like laundry, microwave, <laughs> like, you know, like therapist, all in one machine. Um, Abby would definitely, Abby and Jackson, for sure, they would have a cure by now. Gabriel actually is pretty smart too. He's a doctor, so he knows what's going on. True. The rest of us would just be waiting. <laughs> we should be sitting there like, <laughs> <laughs> so echo is such a strong powerful woman and from what i've seen i feel like you really get the character i feel like you really understand her and where she's coming from so where do you think she takes her strength from especially after her traumatic backstory has been revealed last season yeah. how does she continue fighting well i mean it's funny because I was actually having this conversation with a friend last night. She, she um, was going through a hard time. Uh, she lost someone in her family. And she just kept on asking me, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And I was like, you know, there's no reason when, there's no rhyme or reason to when people have bad things happen to them, you know, when trauma happens, except what it does is it shows you how strong you are and then with that gift you can help other people you know so she out of necessity and survival built that strength from you know watching her parents burn to death yeah like in, in, internally i think she's she's developed that herself over the years but i think she also got a little you know maybe too strong where she wasn't letting people in and that's part of her evolution over the last two seasons, couple seasons, yeah. So what I really like about the show is that it has a lot of great characters, like they all had to make some pretty tough choices. Do you agree with Echo's choices? <laughs> I mean, I remember the first time I got in season three when I got the episode that I, because um, in season two, nobody really knew what who, who, who she was. She was in a cage, her and Bellamy escaped. That was basically, you know, as much as we knew. And then in season three, I came back and I 
uh, you know, she she was doing something for her queen and it was not a choice I would make. Um, she has her reasons for deceiving people and pulling them out of uh, Mount Weather before bombing it. <laughs> um, but I think, no, I don't agree with all the choices she makes. She, I think, you know, there's a time she was too rash. She was too impulsive. Um, she did, she only led with the training that she was given. She was very, you know, maybe robotic in that sense. And now she's a little bit more nuanced, but she, you know, recently she made the decision, she had to leave Orlando behind on Sky Ring, which was tough for her. And, you know, I saw a lot of the fans react to that and they're like you know echo is supposed to be loyal to her family and or the people that she loves and yet with orlando it, it she you know left him there but i defend her decision because in that specific one because for her it was between bellamy and orlando and so the choice is clear you know she saw that orlando was going to betray them when they got to bardo so she didn't really have an option. She couldn't have, take the risk. She didn't kill him, um, but she she had to do it. Had to be done for the safety of Hope and Gabriel and and for Bellamy. So yeah, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. <laughs> but that's like the gray area that I like so much because all the characters were like this. It's not just I her. I know it makes it interesting because you never yeah. really know what's gonna happen. <laughs> So the last season hasn't come out here yet, but is there anything you can tell us about Echo's journey this season? Yeah, I mean, <sighs> so are you watching it right now? Have you seen it like any, any little bit? I started bit like the first or second episode, I think. Okay. So yeah, I mean, she, she definitely unravels. We've seen Echo go through tough times before, um, but what ha has happened in this most recent episode is she sees Bellamy die. And so the last people that she loved, that she considered her family, were her parents and her family. And when she watched them die, it, you know, threw her. And so after all of these years, she opens up and she starts to love again. And then she sees him die and it just is triggering for her because it's like all of that pain for her whole life. It just, she's, you know, comes out and she starts to unravel a bit. Um, so for me, I always want to, I've always wanted to know who is Echo on her own, not, you know, with Asgeta, not with, Bellamy or who if she was to act as an independent person an independent woman then what would she do you know would she be a bad bad guy so to speak or would she you know fight in, for the greater good or and that's what we're going to see this season is she's gonna be a bit rogue and we're gonna see how what decisions she's making you know as an independent uh soldier basically that so, yeah. sounds like a great journey. Yeah, it was. It's it's a stressful journey, but it, <laughs> it was an interesting journey. So I think one question from what I've seen from the, sh the last season so far is like, how come these strong women are all after Bellamy? Like, <laughs> you know, they they're like dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering what it is about him, like. What makes them like leave it everything behind just to go after him yeah i know right because he would do the same for us um i think you know it's he definitely leads with his heart he's very decisive um he just has you know a very strong uh sense of intuitive direction and yes he's had his battles with you know he's gone astray like we saw in season three with pike um but i think it's a mixture of being like a strong human with for you know at least in the context of the hundred like a really good moral compass like you know he does use his 
his heart to lead. And, and I think that's also what made Echo and Bellamy such an interesting match because Echo was so like objective. So she was like, this is like how things work objectively if you were to make decisions without using, you know, your emotions. <laughs> like if you were a general, if you were a strategist. And then he is someone that very much is affected by his heart, you know? And so I think that like balanced them in that way. But he's such a catch, that Bellamy, you know? <laughs> Agree. <laughs> so without spoiling anything, what would be the perfect ideal ending for Echo? If you could choose, whatever. There's a few that I like. Like there was one that Jason was proposing last year that when I went for a meeting with them, like I was like, this is the ending I want. Like I really, really love this story and this idea. And because of a ton of reasons, um, that wasn't able to happen. <laughs> But I think as... Um, There's a lot of things that make sense for her. Like, I think it would make sense for her to die in battle, protecting her loved ones. I think it would make sense for, like, you know, if if it was, was a, a rom-com or a, like, sitcom or something like that, like, I'd love her to have a happy ending at the end, you know, and she can go back to her garden and she can plant her plants and talk to them. Um, <laughs> but it's the hundred, so... Uh, I think dying in battle would be a a appropriate and I, but I would love to see her have a happy ending, but we don't, you know, Makes sense. slim chances on that one. That one. <laughs> so I feel like it's impossible to have an ending that everyone's happy with, like in series in general. Do you think fans will be happy with the finale of the hundred? I do. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that was a long pause <laughs> answer. Um, I, I, I do. I hope that they are. It was definitely not the ending that I thought was going to happen. Um, but I think it's a really interesting one and I think they will be happy. I think of course there's going to be people who are upset because you can't make everybody happy. But yeah, I think they'll be happy with it. I hope. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Did you get to celebrate at all? Because we were filming without reception, we didn't really know how, like we didn't know what was going on with the COVID thing and we were approaching our final week of filming and so all of us were like, oh my God, are we going to be able to finish the show? <laughs> like, because shows were, like Riverdale is across the street, Supergirl is across the street. Um, they were closing, they closed a few days early. And, but we were in our final days of the entire series. So it was so important for us to, you know, finish because we didn't know if we were going to be able to, if everything closed down when it reopened, Were, would we be able to get all of the actors back from their new shows or all over the, like, how was it going to work? So we worked all through the weekend because we were like, by Monday, we might not be able to, you know, like, they might tell us, like, it's over. You guys can't film anymore. So we filmed all through the weekend. And then we had this great party that was canceled. And all of us went and bought dresses and we couldn't wear them. No. <laughs> disappointment um <laughs> but uh but what they did do which was very nice um is jason and and whomever they they th one of the sets is a bar it's the same sanctum bar and we uh they built this huge cake And it looked like the world exploding and it was like magnificent i was like wow do we have to eat that? It's so pretty. <laughs> um, and so we, whoever was there that day, we, um, a couple people came and joined us, but yeah, we worked until like the 11th hour and then we all got to kind of say our goodbyes, but it was really brief. And I feel like we're going to have to have another party, <laughs> but we did, we did get to celebrate a little bit, you know, it was really beautiful. And, and hopefully when the finale 
eras will be able to get together at least in a small group and uh, watch it together. That would be really nice. But yeah. You deserve it. It's a great show. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so now that the 100 is over, can you tell us anything about your future projects? I mean, I can't. It's one of those things, you know, it's always like hard to answer um, unless everything is unless you're told you're allowed to do it, which I'm not. Um, so there are things, you know, in the works. Uh, but right now, because of everything that's going on globally, like I'm feeling so much, such a strong desire to participate in what's going on. You know, I committed so much of my time over the last few years to the show and to acting and it's beautiful and great. But right now I want to shift focus a little bit and you know just work with the community and, and and participate in what's going on and learn about what's going on and because it's such a unique time in history like acting jobs will always come and go and be there but um, I really am trying to make space in my schedule to just be connected to what's going on with all these movements and you know, the health crisis and the mental health crisis and all of those kind of things are really grabbing my my attention, my soul right now. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be doing <laughs> mostly for the next little while. <laughs> that's great. So thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure talking to you.